a strange place. Oh, I don't like it. What Diggory and Polly noticed first was the light. It wasn't like sunlight or any other light they'd ever seen. It was a dull, rather red light, not at all cheerful. It was steady and did not flicker. They were standing on a flat, paved surface and buildings rose all around them. There was no roof overhead. They were in a sort of courtyard. The sky was extraordinarily dark, a blue that was almost black. When you'd seen that sky, you wondered that there should be any light at all. It's very funny weather here. I wonder if we've arrived just in time for a thunderstorm or an eclipse. I still don't like it. The walls rose very high around the courtyard. They had many great windows in them, windows without glass through which you saw nothing but black darkness. Lower down there were great pillared arches that yawned blackly at them. It was rather cold. The buildings were in disrepair and decay. One of the arch doorways was half filled up with rubble. The two children kept turning around and around to look at the different sides of the courtyard. One reason was that they were afraid of somebody or something looking out of those windows at them when their backs were turned. Do you think anyone lives here? No. It's all in ruins. We haven't heard a sound since we came. Let's stand still and listen for a bit. Let's go home. But we haven't seen anything yet. Now we're here, we simply must have a look around. I'm sure there's nothing at all interesting here. Polly, there's not much point in finding a magic ring that lets you into other worlds if you're afraid to look at them when you've got there. Who's talking about being afraid? I only thought you didn't seem very keen on exploring this place. I'll go anywhere you go. We can get away the moment we want to. Let's take off our green rings and put them in our right-hand pockets. All we've got to do is remember that our yellows are in our left-hand pockets. You can keep your hand as near your pockets as you like, but don't put it in, or you'll touch your yellow ring and vanish. Right. These doors look like they lead somewhere. Let's go inside. If you insist. The light's different in here somehow. It isn't so dark. Mind the holes on the floor. Oh, let's carry on through those arches there. Keep an eye on that wall. Looks like it might collapse any minute. This place looks as if it's been deserted for hundreds of years. If that wall's lasted until now, it'll last a bit longer. Does it never end? Let's go up those stairs. Perhaps they lead to a view of some sort. The children went up the great flight of steps and through vast rooms that opened out of one another till you were dizzy with the mere size of the place. Every now and then they thought they were going to get out into the open and see what sort of country lay around that enormous palace. But each time they only got into another courtyard. Look at the size of this fountain. No water though. Or insects. Or moss. It's all so... dead. But it must have been magnificent when people actually lived here. Yes, but it's so dreary now. Can we go, please? Wait! Look at those doors! They're enormous! Are they gold? I can't tell. Let's go in. No sooner had they stepped into the room than they both started and drew a long breath. For here, at last, was something worth seeing. For a second they thought the room was full of people. Hundreds of people, all seated and all perfectly still. Polly and Diggory, as you may guess, stood perfectly still themselves for a good long time, looking in. But presently they decided that what they were looking at could not be real people. There was not a movement, nor the sound of a breath among them all. They were like the most wonderful waxworks you ever saw. All the figures were wearing magnificent clothes. If you were interested in clothes at all, you could hardly help going in to see them closer. There were robes of crimson and silvery grey 
and deep purple and vivid green, and there were patterns and pictures of flowers and strange beasts in needlework all over them. Precious stones of astonishing size and brightness stared from their crowns and hung in chains around their necks and peeped out from all the places where anything was fastened. And the blaze of their colours made this room look not exactly cheerful, but at any rate rich and majestic after all the dust and emptiness of the others. Polly and Diggory walked in a line in front of the seated people. 